Okay, ladies, we're going to get started. So I'm just going to ask that um, you find your seats. And I'm going to go through some just some basic things here first. First of all, when you came in and got your name tag, you should have gotten also a ticket. And if you don't have a ticket, raise your hand, and Lori is going to come over and give you a ticket. So these tickets are for door prizes this year. We have up as you or got your name tag, there was a beautiful wooden sleigh that was just filled with all sorts of things. There are two tables here um, that are also going to be given away as door prizes. It's the whole table, the whole setting, the centerpiece. And then we have a couple candles over on this table over here that also are up for a door prize. So there's four different door prizes that we will be um, picking at the end of the evening. So please make sure you have one of those tickets. Yes, everyone, all hostesses, everybody's eligible. So please get a ticket. These, all of these things, these door prizes, I just want to say were donated by the Wyzetta Community Church Rummage Sale. And they were beautifully designed by Krista. So uh, she did a fabulous job. So thank her. Okay, now. I just want to say that uh, before I get into the program, I just want to say that we have some people this year that have taken on hosting a table and have never even been to the tea. So this is like super huge, and they know that I'm not. I'm. I'm. I don't want to like point their tables out because, and Heidi over there is going, oh my God, she's going to call my name. So. <laughs> Heidi is one of them, and Heidi is new on our staff, and you'll hear her pray er later. But I called Heidi, and I said, uh, she just didn't say no to me, which was so wonderful. She felt like she couldn't say no, but now that we've gotten no to know each other, she will be able to say no to me from this point on. <laughs> but I am so grateful for that. The other person that I have to talk about is Jackie Troxel. So Jackie is all the way over by, she's underneath the fireplace. And she, so I'm talking about the Christmas tea just by the receptionist desk. And she all of a sudden just says, well, I'll do that. I'll host a table. And I'm like, okay, well, it involves this, this, this. And she's like, sure. And I said, and, and then I'm going to put people at your table. Absolutely. I'll take anybody you want at my table. So Jackie is just the most gracious host, and she's, I am so appreciative of people like that. The other thing is the Board of Fellowship really stepped up their game tonight, and we have a couple. Deb Lumendahl, who's right here, stepped up and hosted a table for me. And then Kathy Handy over here hosted a table for me, and again, I'm incredibly grateful. Because with, those, with, with them, we are able to accept just about anyone that calls in and just wants to attend this beautiful event. So uh, it's a huge thank you to them. So with all that said, um, good evening and welcome to Advent. We are heading into number two, I think. Sunday is second Sunday in Advent. So as I planned tea this year, and not all... Not, Every year that this, this, this happened, but this year a theme emerged for me. Each of us here tonight is a creation from the miracle of birth. And that birth, with the help of God, happens with our moms. Tonight, sitting around the tables, there's grandmothers, moms, and daughters. And I know also that many of us in this room have lost our mom. When we enter the Advent season, I can't help but think of the birth of Jesus and his mom, Mary. I lost my mom four years ago, the same year that I took over organizing the tea. 
She was too young. I felt cheated that God had taken her from me so soon. And I wasn't ready to say goodbye. So God so cleverly put the Christmas tea in my lap. My mom absolutely loved Christmas. With very little money and very little time, she never let Christmas be anything but perfect for my brother and me. I was in awe as Christmas came to life in my home with the tea decorated so the tree, all I can think of is tea. <laughs> the tree decorated so beautifully. And these beautiful little Dickens village houses, perfectly placed in this fluffy snow with evergreen trees and decked out with street lights. And as I sat next to the village being very careful not to touch it, I imagined what it would be like to live in that village. Well, it would be very much like this room. Every year, I stand up here and roam around in the awe, in awe of the beauty that just illuminates from the beautiful tables to the warm hugs that I see everyone embracing each other, the wonderful conversations at the tables, and all the beautiful smiles. So thank you, moms, daughters, grandmas, for bringing the awe to Christmas to not only me, but to all these beautiful women in this room tonight. So now, I've done something <laughs> in my fourth year that I've been told has never happened at the Christmas tea. So I really went out on the edge. And I invited male music performers tonight. <laughs> so with us tonight, we have Tim and Paul Franzik, who have been music mainstays for many years. They've been involved in music and mission all the way from China to Haiti. Paul is the founder of Feed Them With Music, an organization that builds a community of artists and fans that understand the arts are the most important tool for positive change in our culture today. Tim and Paul have played many times here at Wyzetta Community Church at author events. They've done worship outside on Wednesdays. They've even been at Evensong when Evensong was going on on Sunday evenings. At almost all of the services, Tim and Paul performed. Their mom and dad, Sonny and Bill, were in attendance here at Wyzetta Community Church. About a year ago, Sonny passed away. And tonight, of all nights, is Sonny's birthday. And we know, as usual, that she is here with us at the Christmas tea tonight to watch her sons sing beautiful music to us. And so please, ladies, help me welcome Tim and Paul Franzik. A lot of X chromosomes here. <laughs> what a treat. Thanks so much for having us. Well, we got this meticulously planned and crafted 25 minutes, but Paul, let's change the first song, would you? I want to sing this one for Mom, because that beautiful introduction. What do you want to play? There's a song that she loved most that we would do. So let's just say happy birthday to her that way, and then we'll get on with it, huh? This comes from her high school days. I bless the day I found you. I want to stay around. And so I thank you Let it be in me Don't take this heaven from one If you must cling to someone Now Let it be me. 
sing a song of Paul's here. He's got a really sweet Christmas song that I just learned this week, and it's good, good to sing a Paul song. This was uh, written for Even Song a few years ago. What happened in the sky when the stars shone bright? What happened in the cow stall that brought the whole world light? happened when Mary first saw his face it's happening here in this common place what happened when the angels sing to God be the glory what happened when the innkeeper read his part in the story what happened when the wise men Felt amazing grace. It's happening here in this common place. It's happening here. Every day is Christmas Day. The second coming is already underway. God. Because I see light in you, and that light will me through another long, dark, lonely winter's day. It happened in the evening, in the shadows of that town. It happened when Joseph took her hand as she bore down. It happened when his first cry filled the empty space. It's happening here right now in this common place. It's happening here every day is Christmas Day. The second coming is already underway. Because I see a light in you, and that light will guide me through another long dark lonely winter's day another long dark lonely winter's day it happened in the sky when the stars shone bright it happened in the cow stall brought the whole world light it happened when Mary first saw his face it's happening here, right now, in this common place. It's happening here, right now, in this common place. Woo! 
You can whoop. I don't know. If this was a bunch of guys, what would they do be doing here right now? I don't know. What? We just don't know. They wouldn't bring China, I don't think. They'd, they'd bring something else. Let's figure out what they'd bring by the end of the time. Melikliki maka oh. is the thing to say on a bright Hawaiian Christmas day. Oh, that's the island greeting that I send to you from the land where the palm trees sway. Well, here we know that Christmas will be green and bright. Sun will shine by day and all the stars by night. Minikaliki Maka is Hawaii's way to say Merry Christmas, to say Merry Christmas, to say Merry Christmas to you. We want you to know that we're bilingual. So that was that right there. Just a little bit of an intellectual piece there. Usually Tim and I work quite hard on having a matching guitars and matching clothes, but we didn't We didn't call each other. No. And I and went I, in my closet this morning and these babies were talking to me. And that's the story, but this is the story, but I did hear an hour before I got here. I was alarmed that the police had been called to Ridgedale Whoa. because Santa showed up without his entire outfit. Well, now, wait a minute. A pantsless Santa will not go far. I thought it was Paul funny. called them Santa pants. I thought they were much more handsome than that. I don't know. You look like a very fit Santa. Really? A fit Santa? I like that. Let's go that direction. So we like singing this old hymn from the 1700s. And it's... Uh, we hung out with, with the, a great writer named Robert Bly. He's still around. He's in his 90s now. And he heard these words from 1753 and said, that's the best poetry of the 18th century, those vowels. Amazing. So I don't know. Listen for vowels. We'll do our best here. And as always, just, just so we lay the rules out for the evening, Singing is completely appropriate. If you want to get into it, if you want to let it fly, if you've had a lot of tea and you really want to sing, <laughs> let, let it go. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, 
and my wandering heart to Thee. Oh, to grace, oh, oh to grace, daily I'm constrained to be. Let Thy goodness, let Thy goodness, find my wandering heart to your chance now. Come thou fount of every blessing. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart Tune my to heart sing thy grace. To sing thy grace. Streams of mercy. Streams of mercy. Never cease. Never cease. Call for songs of loudest Call praise. Call for songs of Teach me some melodious sonnets. Teach me some melodious sonnets. Sung by flaming tongues Sung by above. flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon Praise it. The mount of thy redeeming love. Mount of thy redeeming Here's my heart. Here's my heart. Oh, take and seal it. Take and seal. Seal it for thy court. Seal it above. for thy court. You sound good. Yep. So now that you're singing, now that you're singing, this is another song. This is a simple, uh, original song. This one just has pictures. It's more like a meditation. And this is all about the mother for me. There's that great verse that really strikes me every time we read the Christmas story. And I don't know where it falls in the story, but it just says this. All these things are happening. The angels, all the cows, all the wise people, they're all talking. It's, there's a lot of stuff going on. And it just says, and Mary pondered it all in her heart. That's the best line in the whole story, I think. It's great. So this is our song that with that peace in mind, that peace. And you get to sing this if you would. It goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. or something like that. Let's get it better. start there. We need some more love. Come on. Ooh, ooh. And harmonies are great. Give me a little of that. I know you know what to do. Ooh. Yeah, let's do this now.
from the city's end, the palace's gold in silver starlight the path unfolds here we go Just voices now. I want to try to sound smart again and bring another foreign word. This is Hig. Who knows about Hig? Yes, that's what we're doing right now. It's this Danish kind of Norwegian idea of coziness and togetherness and sharing each other's hearts. And this is Hig right here. Let's do more Hig. And if you want to dance, you can always dance. This is a little bit of a sing-along where in the verses we'll say a line and you say it back. And the chorus goes, everybody's chains came off. Yeah, let's say that again. All the prison doors swung open. Let's yeah, sing that. Again. Everybody's chains came off. And all the prison doors swung open. They got it. Let's do this soon. Feel so good to be singing that. Feel so good to be free again. Feel so good to be free again. Everybody's chains came off. All the prison doors swung open. And everybody's chains came off. All the prison doors swung open. It feels so good to be free. Feels so good to be free again. 
Feels so good to be free again. Feels so good to be free again. Feels so good to be free again. Just something like this. Yeah, you guys know this song. You have silverware at your table if you want to jingle it. But just don't break any china. You know what I'm saying? There's heirlooms here. There you go. Mm, mm, mm. Dashing through the snow in a one horse open sleigh. Over the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells and bobtails ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight. Oh, jingle bells, yeah, jingle bells, jingle come all on, the way. Come on. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Woo! Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Oh, drum solo. Well, a day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride. And soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. Where the horse was lean and lank, misfortune seemed his lot. We got into a drifting bank and we re got upside. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Yeah, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Just like now, now the ground is white. Go it while you're young. Take the boys tonight. Sing a sleighing song. We'll get a bobtail bait. 240 for his speed. We'll drag him to an open sleigh and crack, he'll take the lead. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. You sound good. Well, we're going to try to sneak one more in, and then we'll be done. We'll come up at the end and sing one for you, too. You sound so good playing your vessels. And your singing is wonderful. So this is another nine old hymn. I first heard it with it on an Enya record. It's, it's been sung in a lot of different ways. We put it in 4-4 time and rock it out. So please sing along if you know anything. This world is a crazy place, but how can we keep from singing? Good time to say that.
What though the tempest loudly roars, I hear the truth it lives. What though the darkness round me closes, songs in the night it gives. No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I am clinging. Since love is Lord of heaven and earth, how can I keep from singing? How can I keep from singing? Best people on the planet are here. Much love. Thank you, Tim. Thanks so much. how you can keep from singing after that. Thank you, Tim and Paul. Wow, what a hard act to follow. Now that lovely lady that came up to welcome us today, I don't believe she said her name out loud. <laughs> Most of you probably know Sweet Lisette, but she has put in so many hours organizing all of this recruiting people to be here to host tables. And uh, I don't think she has to try too hard to get these gentlemen to come and help. I think they kind of have a waiting list going. But thank you, Lisette, for your long, hard hours to put this together. I just want to say one thing. When you started talking about your mom, I got a little choked up, and I had started a story this year about my mom, but she died five years ago, and I'm not ready. So thank you for sharing that with us tonight. It makes it especially poignant for all of us, I think. So thank you for being here. When I look out at all of the color and the smiles around this room, it does really get me into this mood for this season coming up. So. You guys are the decorations that are the most beautiful here tonight. And so, I have come to tell you a story. The story will be my 16th story. I started in 2004 and uh, have written, this will be my 16th original short story. And I am going to put a plug in because there are some of the books that were published after story 12 available and 
Dear Adam has helped me put the first five stories on an audio CD. And if you are willing to purchase one of those, 100% of all the money that we collect tonight will go to IOCP. So we can all sit around in a Christmas village and have a home to come home to. So think about that. Um, Cammie will be up there later to, uh, to help with that. And uh, so, story number 16. The Feast of Stephen. Hello, I'm Stephanie Swenson, and I grew up in Victoria, Minnesota. My parents were first-generation immigrants from Czechoslovakia, and they would proudly tell you that they are Bohemian, and their name, Svoboda, became Americanized when they came to the United States in 1948. I have one older brother, John, and then we have Stephen. Actually, I came here tonight to tell you about Stephen. But first, some background. The heart of this story takes place when I was in sixth grade. I loved school, I loved the basketball team, I was super involved in Girl Scouts and in my little church choir. My older brother John was just starting high school that year and was a star player on the hockey team. We were only a few blocks from downtown Victoria, but back then Victoria was not a grown-up town with useful stores like grocery stores and hardware stores and clothing stores. So we had to go to Chaska or to another big city if we needed any of those things. But Victoria was a kid's paradise. There was an ice cream store that was open from Easter to Christmas, a bookstore with a reading loft, a bait shop that my dad and brother loved, a superette for emergencies, a skating rink behind Floyd's bar, and a Dairy Queen that was open in the summer. The neighborhood I lived in was mostly families just like us. Most of us shared similar traditions and customs, and most of us went to the community church in Victoria. Later, I found out that we were a pretty homogenous group with regard to ancestry as well when I read an article in the Victoria Gazette that referred to us as a German-Czech cultural enclave. The extended Swenson family is pretty close, even geographically. We have grandparents, aunts and uncles and cousins that live in Chaska and Belle Plaine and Waconia. Only one of my mother's brothers broke with tradition and settled in Chicago. Of course, we still have lots of family back in Czechoslovakia, which is now called the Czech Republic. When I was seven, our family took a trip to that hometown in Czechoslovakia called Nimburg. It's not too far from Prague. My mom and dad were so excited to reconnect with family and to show us off to the relatives we had never met. It was a glorious trip. I got to meet my mother's mother and father, the grandparents I had never met, some aunts and uncles and a few cousins. During that week, we were spoiled and pampered like royalty. The food is not quite what we were used to here. It was a little like what we eat on Christmas Eve every night. Nine courses and hours around the dinner table. Hard. It was hard, but beautiful. They had pulled out the red carpet for us. During our visit, we saw lots of castles and churches, a really cool park with these tall stone outcroppings everywhere. But what made the biggest impression on me was hearing the story of King Wenceslas. He is a national hero there. There's a whole giant chapel in the Prague Museum that's dedicated just to him. And there are paintings and statues of him everywhere. The town square is named King Wenceslas Court. He is celebrated everywhere as a good and kind king. In fact, he was a saint. 
I heard this story many times on our visit, and I felt when I left to come home, I wanted to celebrate him as well. I knew he always sang that song at Christmas, but I really didn't know his story. It's such a great story, and it's all there in that Christmas carol. Do you guys know that one? Good King Wenceslas? Well, I have uh, asked Lisette to have the lyrics printed on the card. So if you want to follow around, I'm going to read you that story as it comes to us through that Christmas carol, and you can read along if you'd like. Good King Wenceslas looked out on the feast of Stephen when the snow lay round about deep and crisp and even. Brightly shone the moon that night, though the frost was cruel, when a poor man came in sight, gathering winter fuel. Hither, page, and stand by me, if thou knowest it telling, yonder peasant, who is he? Where and what his dwelling? Sire, he lives a good league hence, underneath the mountain, right against the forest fence by St. Agnes' fountain. Bring me flesh and bring me wine, bring me pine logs hither. Thou and I shall see him dine when we bear them thither. Page and monarch, forth they went, forth they went together through the rude wind's wild lament and the bitter weather. Sire, the night is darker now and the wind blows stronger, fails my heart. I know not how I can go on longer. Mark my footsteps, good my page. Trend thou in them, tread thou in them boldly. Thou shalt find the winter's rage freeze thy blood less coldly. In his master's steps he trod, where the snow lay dinted. Heat was in the very sod which the saint had printed. Therefore, Christian men, be sure, wealth or rank possessing, ye who now will bless the poor shall yourselves find blessing. Now, in more common English, the story kind of goes like this. Once upon a time, <laughs> there was a good king and his young page, and they were walking around the kingdom on a cold and crisp night, and they had seen this poor man in the distance collecting wood. And Wenceslas said to his page, go find out who that poor man is and then go gather meat and drink and firewood so that we can bring it to his house. Now during the journey, the page was about to give up because he was struggling against the cold weather when Wenceslas tells him, just follow in my footsteps. And miraculously, as the servant steps into the king's footprints, he feels the warmth of the king's generosity emanating in the snow. And he has the power to go on. Mission accomplished. Now we hear the moral of this tale, the one that hurt, that hit my heart so hard, in those last two lines. Ye who now will bless the poor shall yourselves find blessing. I remember writing those down in my journal at one time and taking them to memory. It was one of those surreal moments when I realized that somehow my life had shifted. As a kid, I always wanted to do more for those who had less. In fact, I couldn't wait to get started. I could just picture that little hand-hewn hut on the edge of the mountain with no heat and no food. And I knew that there were enough people that lived around in my community who had need of help as well. Now for the Swensons, we usually do good around Christmas time. And so when I was in the sixth grade, I had outgrown making my list for Santa. And I no longer worried that Santa was keeping a list of all the good things I did and all the bad things I did, but I still wanted to do good for goodness sake with King Wenceslas as my role model. So I became obsessed with that carol when Christmas time came around. And I 
found ways to work those words of that last line into conversations. It's almost like those devout fans of Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol who run around shouting, God bless us, everyone. I would go around saying, you who bless the poor shall find yourself, yourselves a blessing. You know, how, uh, you know how that song says, on the feast of Stephen? Remember that in the second line? I finally figured it out. The feast of Stephen is the day after Christmas, and it's named for St. Stephen, who is the first martyr in biblical times. Well, King Wenceslas was born with the name Vaclav the Good. And while he moved his way up to becoming king, he did good things until he was assassinated by his brother, Boleslaw the Bad. <laughs> now that's a true story. You can look that one up on Google. So the good king became a martyr, and as a result of that, he was awarded sainthood by the Catholic Church. That's also true. Saint King Wenceslas. So now the Feast of Stephen became a day of doing good and helping the poor. Now the English adopted this day, and they call it Boxing Day. You might be more familiar with, with that term. And it's a day when in England the royalty and the wealthy families would take and box up all of those gifts that they didn't want or need, and they'd take it in all the leftovers of their meal, and they would take it to their servants and give it to them and give them the day off on the day after Christmas because, of course, they didn't have Christmas off. So it became known as Boxing Day. Now, I think if we were to update that to us in our culture, it might look something like the day of returning the boxes. Returning all those gifts we don't like, we don't need, and we don't have room for. And I think we can learn something from King Wenceslas. So I decided maybe I should try to convince my family to celebrate that day. Now, it's our custom, like probably many of you, to go to church on Christmas Eve and eat lots and lots of food. And we do. We eat lots and lots of food on Christmas Eve, and then on Christmas Day, repeat. <laughs> and then the next day, I don't know, we either go to the stores or we collapse. So there was one year after my trip to the Czech Republic that I got two identical Barbie dolls. <laughs> and it, it hit me hard that year. Who needs two identical Barbie dolls? So. I was doing my Wenceslas thing, and I wrapped up that Barbie doll, that extra one, and I brought it to church, and I put it under the tree on Christmas morning. And I just put a little note on it. If there's somebody who didn't get a Barbie doll this year, please give it to them. I didn't know what happened to that Barbie doll, but it was gone the next Sunday. And I realized it hopefully was in the arms of another little girl who didn't get one. Then one year, Miss Jody, is Miss Jody in the room tonight? Miss Jody, uh, she was at our church back in Victoria, too. <laughs> <laughs> she gave us the idea to make Advent bags. And so I got excited about this. She said these bags would go to families who didn't get as the bounty we got, maybe to homeless families. And they needed to have some useful things in them. So for the season of Advent that year, we started collecting things. Every single bag had a toothbrush and toothpaste, some of those uh, uh, towelettes and uh, some socks and an orange. My mom always put an orange in our stocking every year, so we had to put an orange in there. And some protein bars. That's an updated version of what goes in those bags. <laughs> and uh, a new game or toy or book. And we ended up collecting enough to put together 26 bags. And I convinced my family that we needed to take them down to Harbor Lights on the day after Christmas with a big plate of Christmas cookies. 
It felt good. It felt good to do that. And then that same year, that, nec that next year, excuse me, then I was in sixth grade, uh, on the day after Thanksgiving, we had a special delivery letter that came to our house. I remember it so well. We decided to open it over our meal that evening because the letter was from the Czech Republic addressed to the Swenson family, 4725 Bavarian Boulevard, Victoria, Minnesota. We were excited to hear news from Nimburg and eager to read about what had happened to our family from so far away. About halfway through, we knew this was not a casual greeting. It was very serious. Carla, the woman who had lived with our grandparents, was killed in an automobile accident, leaving a young son exactly my age. I remember Carla. She was like part of the family. And I remembered her son. He had bright red hair and lots of freckles. Dad read on. We have an unusual request. Our sweet Stephen is now an orphan. He was a one, he's a wonderful student and a lovely young man, and he needs a home. There is no family here in Nimburg who can care for him. We are too old to give him the opportunities he deserves. He finally remembers your visit four years ago, and he spoke with joy as he saw in your family what it might mean to belong to a family. You see, he has not known a father in all of his years. Would you consider adopting him into your home? We know he will flourish in this new environment if he is surrounded by family. And that is our greatest dream for him. With love, Grandma and Grandpa Norvold. Wow. What do you say after you read a letter like that? Immediately, I thought, without thinking of any of the consequences, cool. <laughs> Having a brother my age, wow. The more the merrier. My brother, John, was quiet. I bet he thought he'd have to share his bedroom. Mom and Dad looked back and forth at each other and at us, and Mom finally said, we'll need to sleep on this. This is a big request, and it will change many things. And so we did. But that night, we did not get much sleep. But the next day, we got busy. And after a unanimous decision, we found we had only two weeks to prepare for Stephen's arrival. We were all thinking the same thing. What are we going to do to make this transition good for Stephen? What will he think of our little town? How will he react to our Swenson Christmas? What, what, how, how? At 3.46 p.m. on December 9th, Flight 1349 landed in MSP Airport, and we were all gathered at the gate, having been given permission to meet this new son and brother as he came off the plane. We brought a few gifts for him, not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but a twins t-shirt and a Viking stocking cap and a wild jersey. It was not hard to recognize Stephen. He was a little older and taller, but he still had that red hair. That was one amazing day and one life-shifting Christmas. Now, 40 years later, I can truly appreciate the gift of that Christmas. A child, a son, a brother came into our family to bring joy and light to our world. He fit right in. And because of Stephen, I think, Uncle Fred from Chicago started traveling to Minnesota for Christmas. We added a new celebration to the Swenson Christmas season, the Feast of Stephen, which we have celebrated every year on the day after Christmas. It's the day we celebrate our good fortune when Stephen came into our family, and a day that we all get together to collaborate, 
to know how to share our fortune with the less fortunate. Over the years, this day has grown in, in importance. And now our kids and our kids' kids are celebrating that with us. Friends have come into the group. Other family members, our church family, we all conspire on that day to do good in remembrance of King Wenceslas. This Christmas, as we all celebrate the birth of Christ, the Christ child from the warmth of our homes and from this beautiful church, let's also remember the gift of family in whatever form it comes to us and give thanks for all the good gifts that come from God, for we are among the most fortunate. Remembering the greatest gifts come to us sometimes in the form of a child who bids us, who begs us to love and care for one another. God bless us, everyone. Ye who bless the poor shall yourselves find blessing. Be the blessing this year. Amen. So, uh, Heidi, <laughs> where did she go? No, you just can't leave. <laughs> Heidi is going to give us a Christmas blessing, and then each of our hostesses will grab their desserts. <gasps> Hi, Riley. <laughs> I'm, I'm really short. I have to pull that down a little. So um, I'm Heidi Segedy. I am our new Director of Special Needs Ministry. Uh, at, yes! <laughs> I see my village. Um, I'm thrilled to be here at Wesleyan Community Church. The community in parables is amazing, but even more important for me, it is magic when I step out into the regular body of the church and you guys are so, it, just so engaged in what's happening and supportive of what we're doing. So thank you. I'm thrilled to be here. And this is my first tea, so I'm having fun. Um, okay, so I'm going to read a Christmas blessing. May an angel whisper words of hope in the silence of your night. May a star in the heavens beckon to you with its light. May God bless you with companions on your journey to the manger. May you know the love of Christ in the kindness of a stranger. May joy fill your heart like an angel's chorus in the sky. May God wipe away your tears and comfort every sigh. May the carols we sing at Christmas give birth to music in your soul. May God's peace touch your life. May God's love, may Christ's love make you whole. And that's our blessing. So am I supposed to send people? So I'm sending our hostesses to the kitchen to collect the most exciting part of the table, which is the dessert. It's here for Lisette, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. So we're going to close things up with um, one song that we'll all sing together. I think it's on your card. And uh, I just wanted to share a quick thought. I haven't spent a ton of time around here, but I've spent enough time around here that on a few very cold and uh, cruel nights of my life, I've walked in the footsteps of this church. And the people that are here tonight, there are several of them that have really helped me and my family along the way. So what you do really, really makes a difference. And it is such... A gift to be here with you all, and I'll share one quick story, and I'll leave it anonymous, but the person's here. There are 856 kids in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, that eat because of a feeding program that I'm a part of, but it has a lot to do with John Estrom and others that have inspired this stuff. And I was on a walk one time because we were out of money, and I literally was saying, what do you do? Like, I, haven't, I guess I'm not supposed to be doing this. 
And um, I literally came back from this three and a half mile little loop in Excelsior. And as I came to my bedroom, the phone, my little cell phone rang. And someone who's in this room said, hey, I think we should feed some people. Unexpected person. They've never done anything like this before. And they had just sold property. And they said they had just set aside enough money to carry us for three months. And I truly, it's one of those moments, I have no idea if we'd still be doing this without that person. So there's real magic, and I so appreciate Lindy, and I think you were one of the last people who was with my mother out at Spring Park. Meaningful, meaningful people here. Thank you so much, and Merry Christmas to you all. So we get to sing together. That's another way of making magic. And you know, half of singing is listening. If you want to do that part, you can. No pressure. Here we go. Silent night. Let's do the first verse again. So 
are so beautiful. A 250 voice woman choir. You guys really impressed me. So beautiful. Thank you for that. That was a real gift. And thank you.